Hi, Kim Soon. Welcome to your fifth and final video over nomenclature. This is it. And I'm really happy to say, in my opinion, this is the easiest one. So I'm giving you the easiest one after the last one, which was the hardest one. So naming acids, you made it through it. Hopefully you feel nice and comfy with it now. I'm adding one last thing, which is naming and writing formulas for molecular compounds. I think these are the easiest. Here we go. Okay, molecular compounds are unique in the fact that they are the only type of compound where you do not crisscross oxidation numbers or reduce the subscripts. So no crisscrossing here. So for writing the formulas for molecular compounds, you write the chemical symbol for the first element and add a subscript to indicate how many atoms of the element are in the compound. See the prefix chart below. If no prefix is written, assume only one atom of that element is in the compound. Mono is omitted for the first element. Number two, write down the chemical symbol for the second element. Add a subscript to indicate how many atoms of the element are present in the compound. See prefix chart below. Here's the prefix chart. You've got to memorize this sucker. I'm not going to give it to you, so you have to memorize it. So one is mono, two is di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and ten is deca. So with a lot of these, like hexa and octa and tri, Think of shapes, like a triangle has three sides, a hexagon has six sides, an octagon has eight sides. That's usually pretty helpful. Okay, so let's do some examples. If we have nitrogen dioxide, well, there's no prefix for nitrogen, so there's just one of them. And then dioxide, di means two oxygens. So NO2 is nitrogen dioxide. Okay, carbon monoxide, one carbon mono, so one oxygen, one carbon, one oxygen. Phosphorus pentachloride, phosphorus is just one, pentachloride means five chlorines. All right, go ahead and try to do the rest of these on your own by pausing the video, and when you come back, I'll help you out. Okay, welcome back. Let's see how you did. Dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay, dinitrogen, two oxygens, tetroxide. Tetra is the prefix for number four, so N2O4. Here's what's interesting about this one. You do not reduce the subscript. So I know with all the other ones you do, but with molecular compounds, you don't. Okay, carbon tetrachloride, CCl4 and boron trifluoride, BF3. Okay, if you didn't get these all right, pause the video, raise your hand, ask for help, you know the drill. Let's move on. Okay, naming molecular compounds. You have to have that prefix chart memorized. So it says, name the first element, including a prefix, if two or more atoms of that element are present. You never use the prefix mono for the first element. For the second element, you change the ending to "-ide", and you include a prefix. So let's try some of these. PCl3, okay, there's just one phosphorus, so I'm just gonna write phosphorus. And then chlorine, I'm gonna change the ending to chloride, and there's three of them. So phosphorus trichloride, pretty easy. Oxygen and then fluorine, one oxygen, so oxygen, and then difluoride. Number three, silicon, two oxygens would be silicon dioxide. Okay, pause the video, try four, five, and six. When you get back, I'll have the answers for you. Okay, welcome back. The answer to number four is carbon tetrabromide. Number five is nitrogen pentaiodide. And number six is sulfur trioxide. At the bottom here, it says always name H2O as water and NH3 as ammonia. Remember that NH3 is actually a base. It's not molecular, even though it's made up of nonmetals. That's a common mistake. So H2O is water and H3 is ammonia. These are their common names. Please don't call H2O dihydrogen monoxide. Please Google dihydrogen monoxide and see what the internet has to give you. 
it will try to scare you about how dihydrogen monoxide is going to kill you, which is silly. They're trying to take advantage of ignorant people who don't know nomenclature. So welcome to being educated. Dihydrogen monoxide is just water. It won't kill you unless you drown. That's a different situation. Anyways, it says molecular compounds are the only type that use prefixes. So the reason that I wait to the very end to teach molecular compounds is because people start applying this di, tri, tetra, penta thing to everything. Please don't do that. If you identify something as molecular, then use prefixes. If it's not molecular, meaning it's ionic, an acid, or a base, do not use prefixes. Okay, congratulations, you made it to the end. That was your last video over nomenclature. Molecular compounds is the easiest one, right? I think so. Okay, so now you've got some practice to do. Go to your practice packet, try these out. The last page is gonna smush everything together. So make sure to identify what type of compound it is first before you try to name it. Otherwise, it gets really confusing. So identify the type first, then name it. And maybe go in order. So like identify, then do all of your ionic compounds, then do all of your acids, all of your bases. Find a method of doing this instead of trying to make your brain switch back and forth constantly. Congratulations, you're done. I hope you understand everything. If not, ask your teacher for some help. Ask her if you can check the key as you're going along. Ask good questions. Bye, kiddos. Have a great day.